You might remember Democratic Delegate Stacey Plaskett from last week's Twitter Files hearings. She defended her questioning of so-called journalist Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger, so-called being her words, not mine, on MSNBC yesterday, but not before host Claire McCaskill had some words of encouragement for the Congresswoman. Okay, first of all, I love you. I think you are amazing. I think what you're doing is incredibly important. And when Thank you're you. doing that, just know there are millions of people out here cheering you on. Because Thank we you. get it. We get it what they're trying to do. And here's the thing. I think most Americans get it. And here's Plaskett on her Twitter files testimony. Are issues that we could be investigating. How about we investigate how Bill Barr weaponized the department, attempted to weaponize the Department of Justice to extend the election fraud lie uh, that the President Trump wanted? How about we even go and look into the IRS, its propensity to audit working class Americans and African Americans more so than they uh, audit wealthy or other individuals uh, who have larger sums of income? How about we look at uh, special FBI agents who have been uh, indicted for colluding with Russians? There are things for us to look into, and I've listed those out to Jim Jordan at various times, and he's absolutely uninterested. And thank you for calling me professional in that exchange. Of course, MAGA World is now saying that, of course, I'm unprofessional, uneducated, etc. Of course you are when you're a black woman going up against uh, someone like Jim Jordan. So, look, you can't you can't get upset that people are insulting you when you yourself are insulting. She insulted Tybee and Schellenberger. She said they're so-called journalists. They're not so-called journalists. They're actual journalists engaged in journalism. And she's like, oh, well, now people are just criticizing me well, wait because a minute, I'm a Robbie. black woman. I, I, I definitely believe that people are making specific arguments, not just criticizing her, but saying that she is not qualified for her job and that she's stupid because she's black. I know, because I get quite a few of those comments every time somebody disagrees with me in her well, very own comments. I think she's not qualified for her job but, because she doesn't understand right. these issues. And that's perfectly fine to I substantively criticize her. We did on the show. Um, people, I hope, can manage to do it without bringing her race into the question. But look, I, I want to go back to what she's saying. She's acting as though it's mutually exclusive to think that there's value in reporting on the Twitter files and that the Twitter files are revealing something important and problematic about the relationship between the intelligence agencies and these social media companies and all of these other issues she's bringing up, some of which I agree should be investigated. Sure. And investigate so the IRS for auditing uh, uh, black people, low-income people, everybody. And now, and now she's Put saying, it on trial. And now, sure. And by the way, she's like, well, I brought it to Jim Jordan and he's not interested. Okay, I'm sorry. The Democrats just had the House. There were all of these concerns about the FBI. Uh, the abolish the FBI conversation was a conversation that was happening last year under Democratic control. And there was no interest in doing any of these investigations at that point either, right? So here, here's the thing. These arguments ultimately come off as bad faith and wanting to avoid any accountability or responsibility for the Democrats' own behavior at the same time that they really don't want to pay any attention to the Twitter files because they're still so caught up in Russiagate that they don't want to have a conversation about ways in which the the intelligence agencies are not always on the right side of things. They see them as the good guy protecting them against Russia. And until they, they get kind of like Hillary pilled, they're not going to be able to see the real value and journalistic merit in something like the Twitter files. It's alarming how poorly they understand this. That came through in Claire McCaskill's um, kind of fluffing of a delegate Plaskett before she talked to her. Claire McCaskill, obviously, formerly a Democratic senator from Missouri. Uh, McCaskill saying that basically saying that it, it's improper or a Republican should not criticize the FBI. Again, they've been captured. You know, she's a talking head on MSNBC, yeah. which is now a network that is captured by, by like, former FBI agents who yes. appear, who are many of their commentators are former law enforcement. And so now they're saying it's it's wrong and it's improper to scrutinize law enforcement. What? It's, but look, I think that she's trying to do this gotcha She's to trying Republicans to gotcha Republicans. Saying, oh, but, you guys yeah. love the cops. You guys are the law and order party. But here you are coming after, you know, the government's yeah. cops. That's fine on that, that's but, fine with some that, that's I think that's a fair criticism on, on like January 6 or whatever. Sure, but this not is not a fair not, criticism on these this. These are this very is different kinds of cops and moreover and, and Nathan Robinson I will say makes this argument uh, and we've gone back and forth about this a lot that you have to be careful about making the kinds of arguments that are not actually rooted in your own kind of moral and value mm -hmm. morals and values but completely in the hypocrisy or what uh, of other people or what kind of draws in other people because the circumstances can change and you can find yourself without a 
substantive argument or on the wrong side of a good argument. He brings this up in the context of like prison abolition. He's like, well, there are some, you know, libertarians who, or, or some conservatives, let's say, who want to decarcerate because of the cost of prisons. But if one day we invent mm -hmm. bug food and suddenly it's really cheap to run prisons, are we not going to have an argument anymore and that we should be arguing from moral principles? And I think this is one of those situations where public opinion is shifting around, I think, some core principles that are good and important. And the Democrats shouldn't give up their, their principled stance against things, like historically, like the overreaches of the deep state, mm -hmm. because they're trying to pander to some Republican ideology that itself is very much in flux right now. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunately becoming a Republican issue when it shouldn't be. It just should just be an issue that concerns everyone. Be, and it, because, again, what the, what the FBI and the other agencies that were leveraging Twitter and other companies, which is the, what's coming out of the Twitter files and out of this hearing, was not particularly partisan. It was limiting your speech on a variety of subjects, and it was coming from an ideology of kind of of, of an authoritarian sort of capture. Almost like a nanny it, state. Like, we can't trust you with this information. Right, right. We can't trust you with this home remedy. For... And it happened under a Democratic president. It happened under yeah. a Republican president. Donald Trump, as I've said many times, cannot be trusted whatsoever to to control this, to, to scale it back, because he was not even fully aware of the extent to which it was going on under his watch. So it, it's not it's not something you need to take a partisan side on. No. But so it's the people like Stacey Plaskett who are choosing. Yeah. They are choosing to make this a part. And Claire McCaskill and other people in mainstream media are choosing to make it a partisan issue because they are not signaling any concern whatsoever about the routine silencing of Americans on all political stripes for making jokes about the election. Yeah. And, and I will say, like, I have pushed back against uh, Matt Taibbi here and on my own show a little bit for leaning into some of the broader right right-wing framing, that this is a very partisan issue, that this all of the censorship is about censor, the, the you know, liberals censoring the right, when I think it's a little bit more nuanced than that. It does appear to be just an anti-establishment bias mm -hmm. um, that permeates out from a, of a kind of a central, central establishment place. But at the same time, I think that there have been moments when I think maybe Taibbi and the other journalists should have pushed back a little bit more. It is also true that only conservative and independent media have showed any interest in covering the so story. So that if people like Plaskett wanted to draw out other aspects of the coverage, if they wanted to perhaps influence Taibbi and the others reporting in a different direction, if they wanted to highlight other aspects of what they've discovered that are more germane to the political interests of liberals, they could have done that. But they chose to make an enemy out of the entire right. project, and they can't be really surprised when the prevailing narrative around the pro project is that it is a anti-conservative pro program that the liberals are implementing, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, and, and, and so we get to this very frustrating place where it is a partisan issue when it shouldn't be. Yeah. And that kind of commentary just really doesn't help. They, they don't understand. They fundamentally have missed why this is a threat to everyone's free speech rights. Yeah. And this is not a healthy thing for society to have a to have agencies that are operating totally independent of, of democratic accountability trying to patrol what you get to say on social media. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have more rising right after this. Please stay with us.